Oh, Shabbat Shalom, guys. I had my thing off. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. I hope you guys having a wonderful Sabbath. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, we did. We went on the road, got back safe. Thank you for all the prayers. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start now uh, on the screen before you. Uh, I have a lot of material to cover today, but I'm not going to be getting into too long of a video. I hope it's not too long of a video today, but I got to touch base on the Bible. We got a lot of various uh, verses that I'm going to be reading. Uh, fleeing from temptations, you know, fleeing from temptations. Uh, and so uh, Monte Judah has a report. Uh, 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 be, uh, Israel News, uh, I'm going to probably cover a little bit of Israel News from Friday. And uh, also uh, Monte Judah did a video on Wednesday night or Wednesday evening before Thanksgiving. So I'm going to be covering a little of his video and a little of Israel 7 News. And also World News Report, uh, also BP Earthwatch. Uh, Lisa Haven, uh, Jonathan Kahn have a message that I want to put in the description box, guys, for you to go and look at. It's an audio uh, about what's going on, so I will uh, put that in the description box. And other things will be in the description box. We have a lot of material, but I'm going to put it in the description box. Quite a few materials on different things going on. So uh, look for it in the description box. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with a song. Uh, coming from uh, Witten. Uh, uh, her music, I love her music. And I'm going to be playing a song that she put out called uh, Psalm 91. And I love the name of it, Run, Run, because it kind of mixed in with what I want to talk about today on fleeing from sin, fleeing from temptation. So uh, we're going to do that. And also, uh, Maranatha, at the end of the video, i uh, be talking about calamities calamities blamed on God's people. And so I'm going to be getting into that at the end of the video. So let's get started with a song and uh, and we'll get, get going here with this uh, video for the day. I do want you to buy my ebook titled He Did What from Amazon.com, Apple, Google, Kobo.com, Lulu.com, Bonds and Noble. The link is on the screen. ISBN number is on the screen. Uh, you can download all the ebooks from fmcmi.org slash downloads uh, click subscribe the like bell subscribe to our youtube channel click the like button click the notification bell fair use notice is in front of you uh, also uh, title 17 disclaimer and also fbi notice so i'm gonna go ahead and get started now with this song wonderful song that she did i love this song so much uh, so hope you get really like it too i think it's a really cool song from psalm 91 so uh, we all know that we need to be keeping the covering over us, the blood over us. When I went out, I anointed my car before I got on the highways. You know, you need to be really aware of the enemy right now. Uh, so we're going to be always uh, being wise at this time. And that's why I want to talk about my subject matter today about the avoiding temptations. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead now and get started here. Let me go ahead and mute it out. We're gonna run to you We're gonna run to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna run to you shelter 
of the Most High God shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He will say. TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. A tense pause has taken hold since 7.15 this morning with the first installment of Israeli hostages, including 13 women and children, arriving in Israel after 49 days in Palestinian captivity. 
The RDF reaffirms its commitment to launch the second stage of the war against Hamas in Gaza following the culmination of the four-day pause. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu warns Western leaders that unless Israel wins its war against the Iranian-led Axis, Europe will be next. Israel has abided by the U.S. brokered arrangement via Qatari mediation by seizing its military advance in the terror-plagued Gaza Strip. Highlighting the details of the arrangement, Qatar's foreign ministry spokesman underscored that for the next four days, between 50 to 70 women and children who were abducted by Hamas during the October 7th massacre would be released in daily installments. We have just uh, finished with all the communication with all uh, parties in order to ascertain the lists of uh, those civilians who will be uh, freed as a result of the deal agreed upon by, uh, by both parties. The uh, lists have been handed to both sides and finally uh, in a communication just now the list has been handed to the uh, Israeli intelligence service, the, uh, the Mossad, in order to facilitate the implementation of, uh, of the deal. Uh, the beginning of the uh, pause will be 7 a.m. Friday, the 24th of November, and it will last, of course, as agreed for four uh, days. And uh, the first uh, patch of civilians to, uh, to be released from Gaza will be around 4 p.m. of the same day. They will be 13 in number, all women and uh, children, and uh, those hostages who are from the same families will be uh, put together within the same patch. Obviously, every day will include a number of, uh, of civilians as agreed to total 50 within the four uh, days. The RDF concluded all preparations to receive the first installment of Israeli hostages. With all the successes we experienced along the way, today is the beginning of the light at the end of the tunnel. We have the great privilege to be here at this significant moment. We are all in this together. The RDF has effectively ceased far at 7 a.m. this morning. And while the Islamist Hamas and its terror affiliates in Gaza had breached the ceasefire, nearly 15 minutes into the agreed-upon pause, by launching a barrage of rockets towards civilian Israeli communities, all guns have gone silent since. Meanwhile, shortly after 4.30 p.m. earlier today, 13 women and children were released after a total of 49 days in Hamas captivity. It is important to know that while a tense pause will be upheld in the next several days, once the arrangement's duration runs its course, Israel will once again activate its strong power and force with the unyielding aim of achieving its war objectives. Control over northern Gaza is the first step of a long war. We are preparing for the next stages. We are looking forward in the coming days, we will focus on planning and fulfilling the next stages of the war. When the pause and fighting goes into effect, our forces will be stationed at the ceasefire line inside the Gaza Strip. I want to emphasize inside the Gaza Strip and they will also move along these lines that were agreed upon in the agreement. It is important to know that in contrast to the anti-Israel narratives broadcast globally, international support for Israel's war objectives remains steadfast, and in the last 24 hours alone, the foreign ministers of the United Kingdom, Portugal, and Slovenia visited Israel, during which they relayed to the Israeli leadership in Jerusalem their respective nation's steadfast support. Severally, the prime ministers of Belgium and Spain also visited Israel, during the course of which Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu seized the opportunity to highlight the core reason for the war at hand. We face a peculiar uh, kind of enemy, a particularly cruel and inhuman foe. Uh, they're genocidal. They're not fighting for this or that uh, territory, they're fighting to eliminate the Jewish state in whatever boundary they say so. Their charter says if you find a bush and the Jew is hiding behind it, kill the Jew, kill all the Jews. The goal goes beyond the destruction of Israel. They're part of an axis of terror. Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, Houthis. They say death to America. That's the great Satan. 
Israel is a small Satan. I hope I don't find any offense with any of you. You're a middle-sized Satan. They hate our free civilization. They want to bury it. They have uh, an ideology that is mad. In the 21st century, after the Enlightenment, after the scientific revolution, after the advance of human rights and democracy, this is sheer madness. Netanyahu went on to warn, in the presence of the Spanish and Belgian leaders, against drawing a moral equivalence between Israel and the Islamist societies. I don't give it relative uh, moralism that says, moral relativism that says, well, they have their society, they can do these horrible things to women, they can do these horrible things to human beings. That's their value system, that's not a value system. That's something that has to be fought. And one thing that we discover in the 21st century is that our assumption that we can live our civilized lives in our advanced countries, seeking peace, prosperity, and progress, and we can just sit back, and the barbarians will not come back. They come back. They come back in many places. And if we are unwilling to fight the barbarians, they will win. The Israeli premier continued by highlighting the obligation of democracies to fight against the forces that seek to eradicate all non-Islamist civilizations. So what is a democracy committed to the human, to the laws of war supposed to do? Do the laws of war give exemption to such criminals? And the answer is, they don't. They say, do your best to target the terrorists. Do your best to minimize civilian casualties. But if we, the democracies, accept, say that under no circumstances should we go in, because civilians tragically get killed, then we lost. We lost before we begin. You lost, and you lost. Spain lost. Belgium lost, because this will spread. You will see it very soon, because the axis of terror is not going to stop. If they can uh, emerge victorious here, they intend to bring down the Middle East. And next they'll go to Europe. After that, they'll go elsewhere. If you think I'm exaggerating, I am not. This is where the pivot of history now is going to be decided. While further highlighting Israel's extensive efforts to protect civilians in the Gaza Strip, far beyond its obligations under international law, Netanyahu stressed that the West must wake up and take a stand, or else it will be too late. I'm happy to say that there is a decline in civilian casualties, which is our goal. Our goal is to have none. And primarily, that's because of the ground action. The ground action has resulted in the fact that the warnings that we give are uh, addressed by the population, civilian population, they go south. When they go south, we give them humanitarian support. There are about 150 trucks now going in, probably go up to 200 and beyond. Food, medicine, water. I have not seen yet the effort that I'd like to see from the UN and the international agencies to build their shelters. Winter is coming, and there's no reason not to build tens of thousands of tents in the safe zone, next to the safe zone, because they don't enter the safe zone, the UN, which I think is shocking. I said, okay, we'll give you a lot of little zones. And they're building little safe zones to get the population out of harm's way. Israel is doing everything in its power to get the population out of harm's way. Hamas is doing everything in its power to keep the population in harm's way. And that's the fact. And Israel cannot be held to a standard that no one is being held to. We have to fight the terror. We're in complete compliance with international law. I think in many ways we're setting a, a different standard. We seek to minimize civilian casualties, and Hamas seeks to maximize them. And I would strongly urge you to make that distinction, not merely because it's right and just, but because your very societies are on the line. You're next. 
This is a battle for civilization. It has to be won. We will win it because we have no other choice. We don't have a future if we don't. Hamas has already said we'll do it again and again and again. So we'll have to, we'll have to eradicate them. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Moreover, if you're blessed by our daily updates and would like to help us bear the costs of these productions, since TV7 Israel is 100% donation-based, please consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Hessen, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom Mevorach, and God willing, We'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem. Okay, guys, we really got some serious issues going on in the Middle East, and that's why I said I wanted to get up here and try to do some news here on Shabbat today. I have breaking news and all kind of things coming in from uh, different people, Lewis and Florida. This is the video I want you guys to watch that was aired yesterday uh, uh, from Jonathan Kahn. The world is in danger of being destroyed, okay? And I will put it in the description box. I think I'm going to get a very uh, little bit of material coming from uh, Monte Judah. Uh, I think I'm going to be putting it in the description box so for you guys to follow it, but I won't be doing but a very little bit of it right now. Uh, he did it on Wednesday uh, prior to Thanksgiving, so I'm going to do a little bit of it. Because I want to get to the other materials, and I definitely want to do the Bible today. So I'm going to go ahead now and find him and let him speak a little bit. Because he got an 18-minute video, and I don't think I want to do the whole thing. So uh, I'm going to do part of it, probably half of it, something like that. But uh, let me go ahead and pray it, and we get into the other materials here. Uh, Lewis in Florida, and BP Earth Watch, and World News Report, and uh, people like that. Lisa Haven, okay? So let me go ahead and... Uh, get that done. Let me go ahead and meet out again. And in the Middle East, there's about 50 hostages getting ready to be released from uh, the Gaza war. They're going to come in a series of four days. The U.S. is at war with Iran now, and the Iron Beam is now being used for the first time to join the Iron Dome anti-missile system. And Israel Intel Unit 504 is now taking on a new role in the Middle East. Those stories and more, Messianic World Update begins now. Shalom everyone, I'm Monty Judah with Lion Land Ministries. Welcome to another edition of Messianic World Update. Today's date is Wednesday, November 22nd of the year 2023. We're coming to you two days earlier because of the Thanksgiving holiday. Let me wish you a happy Thanksgiving um, for this weekend. Uh, in the news today, the most uh, significant thing is there's now word that there's going to be some hostages released. Apparently the negotiations have taken place involving the US, Egypt, Qatar, and Israel along with Hamas to try to get some of the hostages out. At the moment, the decision has been made by the war cabinet to agree to an exchange of approximately 50 or possibly more Israeli hostages in exchange for 150 Palestinians. Now, let me give you a little more detail with regard to that. They're going to start this tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day. It will be 12 to 13 hostages each day for the next four days. And Israel will then be turning over some hostages they have that they've been holding. And those 150 Palestinians we're talking about are women and teenagers that were in Israel at the time the October 7th event took place. They have approximately 300 uh, Palestinians in custody, but they're going to release about 150 of them in exchange for 50 hostages. We believe these hostages primarily are going to be women and small children. That's of the greatest concern around the world, and particularly within Israel, to get the children out of there. However, there's a little bit of a snag, and I need to explain the problem. This is a negotiation with Hamas. There is still the Palestinian Islamic Jihad organization inside Gaza, 
and we believe they have some hostages as well. This negotiation is not with them. So don't get the idea that Hamas is like in charge of everything. There's two terrorist organizations in there and there's two groups of hostages. We'll just have to see which of the hostages are going to be released, but there's great anticipation at the moment to get some of them out. Now, what is this going to accomplish by having a four-day release, uh, a ceasefire pause, if you will, and be able to get some hostages out? Well, one, I think it's going to take the wind out of the sails of all the people who've been arguing in the protest for a ceasefire and the urge within Israel to get some hostages out. Tremendous pressure has been put against Netanyahu and the government in Israel by Israeli citizens to get those children out of there. So we're going to answer that. We're going to take care of some of that. But the, the question is, what about the other hostages? What, what are we going to do about that? Well, interestingly enough, there is an agreement now, and nobody thinks it's going to happen, but let me go ahead and tell you what it is, that after the four days, if the terrorists continue to release at least 10 hostages every day, Israel will maintain the ceasefire. Now, also, this is kind of a twist on this, Hezbollah has, oh, up in the north has agreed they too will honor the ceasefire that's going on down in Gaza. By the way, that shows you how strongly connected Hezbollah is to Hamas, that they would get Hezbollah to agree to a ceasefire, a pause, if you will, in the same time frame. But it does allow Hamas to regroup, regather, move some of their forces that may have been constrained in movements because of the IDF operations, and it will give Hamas an opportunity to reestablish itself to a certain degree. The IDF uh, has said emphatically that once the exchange takes place, once the ceasefire pause stops, they will be about the business of killing Hamas. Uh, if they allow any more people back into Gaza, they are going to be subject to the same Hamas uh, thing that's going on uh, with them. Uh, let me shift gears just a little bit. The U.S. is now clearly in a war with Iran, but refuses to say so. Uh, as you've heard, there's been Iranian proxy units in Iraq and Syria attacking U.S. forces in those areas. Uh, those forces are there, special forces are there to maintain and make sure that ISIS doesn't pop up again and other Islamic terrorists don't pop up. And so they become like standing targets for Iranian proxy units to attack at will. More than 60 attacks have taken place. Several soldiers have been wounded. Uh, in this process in the U.S. in hopes to not expand the war in the Middle East, refuses to really retaliate uh, effectively against Iran in this effort. Instead, they go over and hit warehouses and they hit other places. Maybe a few people are wounded or injured in the process. And in fact, the most recent one, there was a couple of strikes there in Iraq and Syria and there were some Iranian proxy units that were killed in the process. What is Iran's strategy in doing that? Why are they making these harassing attacks on the U.S.? Well, you see, we did something back a couple of years ago when Joe Biden decided we don't want to be in Afghanistan anymore. And he watched Joe Biden pull all U.S. forces out of Afghanistan in a great big hurry to the chagrin and harm of us and everybody else, leaving all kinds of equipment behind. And Iran thinks that Joe Biden will do the same thing leaving Syria and Iraq. All you have to do is harass him enough times and the U.S. will pull up stakes and get out of the Middle East. And that is exactly what Iran wants. They want the U.S. out of the Middle East so that they can continue their efforts to control the Middle East and influence other nations in their direction. It's obvious what the strategy is here. Hey, you know, I should get a consulting job in the National Security Council for the president. I could tell them all this stuff so maybe they could change their tactics just a little bit and how to deal with this. Of course, my recommendation would be nail Iran. They're the guys causing all the trouble with Hezbollah, with Hamas, and the Hutu rebels. They're the source of all kinds of problems, and they're the ones that are hell-bent 
on attacking U.S. and U.S. interests, including Israel. Well, I can tell you the battle strategy plan to put Iran back on their heels in a great big hurry, and we'll probably not put that many uh, U.S. forces at risk. You know, let's use some of that big, high, expensive weaponry that we've paid for with our taxpayer dollars and have it do something for us, maybe. Of course, I'm not, I haven't filled out my application for the National Security Council. I'm not sure they're going to call me. But in any case, you know, for you folks that are praying to God and asking for some sanity to come into the world, you, you at least understand kind of what some of the problems are. Okay, so moving past the U.S., the Iranian strategy very clearly has been broken to a certain extent by what Israel and the IDF has done. Hamas is spent. They are on their heels. They're in trouble. And the West Bank elements that Hamas has been working with, um, they're in trouble too. The, the IDF has been successful in attacking and taking out the strongholds, and there's no question the IDF is going to take the leadership of Hamas out. That breaks the connection to Iran. It, it no longer can Hamas be an operative for Iran or the other Islamic Jihad terrorists that are in the West Bank. Uh, they can't take them out as well. By the way, did I mention that in this hostage negotiation, it is with Hamas, it is not with Islamic Jihad. Islamic Jihad is still in the Gaza area. They still have hostages as well. This agreement is not full and complete with regard to them. And it would be in the interest of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad to break the ceasefire. We would get the negotiation going and then have the heartbreak of not being able to complete it. That would be definitely in their interest. So we have to be very cautious about whether or not this whole thing is going to come off or not. And in fact, I'm very skeptical. And I think the government of Israel is equally skeptical about whether or not we really can pull it off. So at the moment, we're going to do our best to see what's going on. Hezbollah in the north, as part of the Iranian strategy, is just waiting for Iran to give the green light to them. And um, I think that, uh, that if, if Iran is really going to pull the trigger on the northern campaign into Israel, they would have to do it also in conjunction with their proxy units that are in Iraq and Syria. They would also have to fire some of their long-range missiles uh, out of Iran into Israel. It would have to be a full campaign on their part. I think the U.S. would have to step to the side if that were to take place, unless they themselves were being attacked, and Israel would be hard-pressed if that takes place. Now, is Iran going to do that? Well, uh, at the moment, uh, th that's a good question. There are arguments that could be made for Iran to expand the war, and there are arguments for them to hold off. Probably one of the key factors in that does Iran have that nuclear weapon yet? The belief is that they have one. And if they thought they could come up with a scheme in which they could deliver that weapon to Israel and not get shot down or get stopped by Israel, I think they would be thinking about doing it. Uh, so that's the real question is, does Iran have that weapon and do they have a way to deliver it uh, to Israel? Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, but, but we're approaching the days when that's going to be a very difficult question and decision have to be made by them as well as by Israel. Um, on, uh, from the new weapon technology, the iron beam, the new laser-guided weapon that shoots down rockets and missiles and mortars, for the first time has been used down in southern Israel with a shot down, a successfully shot down a rocket that was fired out of Gaza. And I can tell you right now, that program that was scheduled to deliver those systems in 2025, it is on full speed alert right now. They are trying to build those things as fast as they can. The reason why is because while Iron Dome does a great job shooting down more than 90% of the rockets and missiles they go after, the fact of the matter is they can't reload them fast enough compared to the number of rockets that can be fired by uh, for example, Hezbollah in the north. Uh, basically, Israel can handle up to about 3,000 to 4,000 rockets a day, but when you get up into 5,000 a day, 
it's more rockets coming in than they can use. So iron beam, this laser weapon, is a rapid fire weapon. By the way, it's far less expensive to use that compared to iron dome missiles. And so Israel is in a crash program trying to build those just as fast as they can. At the moment, the first one has been successful in shooting down um, an, a rocket out of Gaza. Let me tell you about another unit, and this is now coming out in the news. It's called Unit 504. It's a military intelligence unit that's now being um, shared with us by I Israel's IDF. If you go and look at Israeli intelligence, there's two major organizations. There's Mossad, and Mossad is the worldwide Israeli intelligence organization. They tend to focus on what is Iran doing. So whenever you hear about Israeli intelligence, anything to do with, with Iran, you're probably talking about Mossad. But if you're talking about Israel's intelligence unit that has to do with Gaza and terrorists in Gaza and the West Bank, we're talking about an organization called Shin Bet. And they deal with the internal elements of security for Israel. But now, as a result of the war, we have a new intelligence unit that has come out. It's always been there. It was a military intelligence unit called Unit 504. And they have come to the forefront here recently as a result of the Gaza war. Let me tell you a little bit about them. They're the guys that interrogate Palestinian prisoners and terrorists they capture. They're the guys putting the intelligence together of all the tunnels that are down in Gaza. They're the guys that do all the intelligence work to be able to find where the booby traps are at and, and what kind of booby traps are they using. And they're also the guys working on hostage locations down in Gaza. They have become an extremely important intelligence unit within the government of Israel. And all three are now taking a prominent role in what we're hearing out of the Middle East with regard to dealing with Gaza, Hezbollah, and Iran. Um, in closing, I'd like to share two anecdotal stories uh, that have come out. The, whenever Israel gets into a war, you keep hearing about these interesting stories of things that happen in warfare that to a spiritual person like us, we have to go, wait a minute, I think maybe God was involved here. Let me share just two of them that have come out here recently. These aren't all of them, but I thought I'd share two of them with you. Um, there's a, a report now of an IDF soldier that was moving into a, a new piece of ground in Gaza, and, no, and the IDF hadn't been in there yet, and he's making his way forward cautiously. And of course, the thing he's avoiding, trying to avoid, is any booba traps that have been set up. And so he's very carefully, you know, head is on a swivel, looking for everything, see if anybody's going to pop up, or if he can see anything that would look like a booby trap. Well, as he's moving forward, he stops for a moment, and he stops because all of a sudden he sees a dove, a bird, you know, this bird is flying around, and the dove lands right in front of him. Only the dove is apparently sitting in the air, and the dove landed on the tripwire of a booby trap. And because the dove is sitting there in the air, not flying, he noticed and he suddenly realized, oh, that's a tripwire. So he was able to back up and this dove saved his life. Whereas I recall, I think in the Bible, I've heard about God using doves at various times to land on, around people and indicate certain spiritual things. I thought that was an interesting story. But let me give you this latest one. Up in the Gaza Strip, in an area where they pretty much have cleared out the Hamas terrorists, there's still these underground tunnels where they pop up every once in a while. These, uh, and but they're in that ground, and there's four IDF soldiers that take a sit down and they have an opportunity to take a break. So they're sitting around and they decide to clean their weapons. They pull the clips out, and they want to get the dirt out of their weapon, make sure the weapon will fire correctly, and all that. And you know what happens when you get a weapon on your lap and you pull the clip out and you forget there's a round in the chamber. And sure enough, this IDF soldier forgot there's a round in the chamber and he, he, he sets the gun off, he fires the gun. Now, thank goodness the round did not fly out and hit one of his fellow guys that was there with him. Instead, 
It flew off at that moment and nailed Hamas terrorists that had just popped up with an RPG, was going to kill all four of them, and the misfire on the gun took out the Hamas terrorists. They are saying basically the odds of this are something like one in 400,000 million whatever that, that do that. But I don't think it was coincidence. I think maybe the God of Israel knows what's going on in Gaza, and I think he's involved with the IDF soldiers. Sad Sadly, though, we have now lost 69 IDF soldiers in this campaign. Most recently, there were seven killed by friendly fire. It wasn't the terrorists that got them, it was friendly fire. And those kinds of things happen in warfare, sadly. So with all that news, um, you guys have a great weekend. Have a Okay, guys, I guess I played both of those videos. I really wanted the, you guys to hear that testimony, so that's really wonderful. God is on the war grounds. Uh, he's really protecting you. Like I say, Psalm 91, angels are all around. But we now to con continually praying for the Middle East situation and America. I'm going to go here now to Lewis in Florida. He's talking about something going on. And Lisa Haven and... Uh, and also uh, get into some other things here. I think some other news from World News Report and also BP Earthwatch. So let me go ahead and do that now. Uh, let me mute out again. God bless every single one of you. Today is November 25th, 2023, and welcome to the Grand Screen News Channel. All right, guys, so we have some urgent information coming out. If you can, please share this video. And it says here, NYPD cops leave forests in alarming rate. Over 2,500 turn in badges so far in 2023. Yikes. All right, let's see what's going on here, guys. If you can, please share this video. Uh, and it says here, New York's finest continue to bolt from the job at an alarming rate, according to new data obtained by the Post. And some cops worry the exodus will only get worse. This is just the beginning. All right, guys, before I start, give this video a big thumbs up. Twenty-three, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. All right, guys. So we have some breaking news updates. If you can, please share this video. And just looking at this title, it's not looking good. So we have multiple information coming out. Uh, this one here is big. It says the Holy Land is now sending messages to the whole world. The deal must be completed by midnight. Otherwise, they well immediately then you have this group is saying that uh delaying of the innocent ones until holy land adheres to agreement man what's going on here all right so the holy land is putting out their warnings uh the holy land is saying man we are putting out a message to the world to the whole world the deal must be done tonight by midnight. All right, guys, before I start, give this video a big thumbs Well, welcome back to the broadcast. I hope you guys are having an amazing holiday weekend. Uh, mine's been going well until I woke up to this news report today on how the Biden administration is yet again doing everything in their power to tear our country limb from limb and destroy us. And you're gonna see more evidence for that today uh, than you have probably seen in a very long time. But the truth of the matter is, is right now half of the United States of America is at elevated risk because of because of this administration. And you're probably thinking, what are we at elevated risk of? Well, 
Before I get into that, I got to give a quick shout out to my partner, GetTheTea.com. This is, uh, he has been with me forever. This company has been with me a very long time. And by the way, the reason I stick with GetTheTea.com is because it has changed my life. If you're looking for something to detox your body after eating all that holiday turkey and food that you had, this is absolutely a, a, an amazing way to do it. And I do this on a regular basis, but the good news is at GetTheTea.com, they're having a special buy two, get one free. By the way, and on top of it all, if you use the coupon code LISA, you'll get an additional 10% off of that. So make sure you put in LISA, that coupon code, which is just specifically for you guys. If you want more information, click that more button or click in the description box below. All right, so let's dive in to what transgender. It's made very, very cool through the media has caused the United States of America, at least half of our country, what has put us in elevated risk? We'll take a look at this document. Now, this document was published by NERC, the North American Electric Reliability Corporation. You can see this was published just this month, November 2023, and it is their winter reliability assessment. In other words, how good is our power grid under the Biden administration? And the truth of the matter is, it's not looking good at all. And here's what they state, their key findings. This WRA covers the upcoming three month, December to February winter period. This assessment provides an evaluation of the generation resource and transmission system adequacy necessary to meet projected winter peak demands and operating reserves. This assessment identifies the potential reliability issues of interest and regional risk. The following findings are the EROs, the Enterprises Independent Evaluation of Electricity, Generation and Transmission Capacity, as well as the potential operational concerns that may need to be addressed for the upcoming winter. And what is their number one concern? Well, a large portion of the North American BPS is at risk of insufficient electricity supplies during peak winter conditions. And over on the right, all those little um, states and parts of the United States of America in orange show potential for insufficient operating reserves in above normal conditions. That risk is elevated. Now the red one up here, and that's over in Canada, that is a very high risk. In other words, if you live in any of those particular areas uh, that are highlighted right now in orange or red, then you, my friend, are likely going to have blackouts and rolling blackouts as well. This is not my assessment, this is the assessment of the NERC, very reliable information. And by the way, they also talk about how generator fuel supplies are also remaining a risk during these extreme long duration cold winter events. So prepare for blackouts. If you're in Texas going on up there, you know, all the way to you know, New York and, 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 and some of these liberal places there that have put us in this mess. Now, what's even more interesting is that assessment that I just showed you goes on to detail that the reason, one of the reasons we are having these issues is because of the Biden administration's policies directly. Take a look at this article here, and I want to show it to you because um, a, a power grid watchdog uh, even warns about this. Foxbusiness.com power grid watchdog warns of higher winter blackout risk, cites Biden's energy policies as the top threat. Now, the North American Electricity Reliable Corporation, the NERC, this document here that I just showed you guys, warned this week that more than half of the U.S. is at an elevated risk of blackouts this winter due to a combination of increased demand, regional power generation shortfalls, and potential fuel delivery challenges in the event of prolonged cold weather events. The findings came from the NERC's annual winter reliability assessment released on Wednesday, which, and this is huge, for the first time in its 55-year history, pointed to energy policy as one of the top threats to the United States power grid due to the Biden administration's green agenda. Thank you yet again, Dementia Biden. 55 years, they've never done that. And now we have it pointing directly 
to the policies. And it goes on to talk about some of those uh, policies as well. This thing is, is having a, a crazy day right now with me, but here's what it says. The National Rural Electric Cooperation Association said the key factors contributing to the risk are increasing demand for electricity to power things like electric vehicles, decreasing generation due to the premature closure of coal and gas fired power plants and permitting delays that prevent new infrastructure from being built and connected to the grid. Now the NRECA hit out directly at the EPA's proposed power plant rule aimed at reducing plant emissions by 90% by 2035, saying the Biden administration plan uses unproven technologies, unrealistic compliance timelines, and threatens electric reliability and affordability for the American public. And that's no joke. So he, he lists a numbers, number of things here. He says one of the things that is adding to the problem with the electric is you're plugging in these stupid electrical vehicles. <laughs> Would you know that that's the very thing that Joe Biden's entire administration wants all of us to own by 20, what, 2055 or something like that, 2039. I don't know, the timeline keeps changing. But hey, if we plugged all, if we all got an electrical vehicle like the Green Prince uh, of our country wants, then that would destroy our power grid. We wouldn't have enough power to run it. It would completely obliterate it. But hey, plug that car in and uh, everybody do it. Let's just not reap the consequences. So this disaster of a president tells you to buy an electrical vehicle. So you know that you won't have electricity. He knows very, he knows damn well that it's going to mess up the power grid. So it's all, it's being done on purpose. Buy that electric car, plug it in and destroy the grid so you have no power. Second thing that he has done is he's done premature closures of coal and gas fired power plants. And he even permitted delays that prevented new infrastructure from being built. In other words, we're not going to fix it that way. No, no, we're going to rely on, you know, mining cobalt, children mining cobalt overseas so we can get these solar panels and these wind turbines that, by the way, are not sufficient energy and will not power us. It won't. You're only going to end up with massive amounts of blackouts. And then, of course, him wanting to reduce emissions by 90% by 2035. It's on purpose. Literally, it's on purpose. If they were really going to go green and go all the way green, we and, and I remember quoting this before, but five North or South Dakotas, like that much of America would have to be industrialized with solar power and wind turbine and batteries in order to give us a sufficient amount of energy. In other words, we don't have the capability. I mean, we got nuclear power plants, but hey, those are green, but we hear nothing from the left on that. Meanwhile, half of our country is James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today's November 24th, 2023, 5.30 p.m. Central here in the USA. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. If you can't hear it in my voice, I'm a little under the weather, but there's so many important things that you guys need to know. We're going to have to push through, right? Back to the big swarm of earthquakes, the biggest being a 6.9 magnitude earthquake in the Marina Islands this is on a volcanic ridge on a tectonic plate boundary. And instead of having an associated tsunami warning with it, it actually created a very large tsunami, which I personally have not seen before. We'll go over some of the stuff in that area. I'll zoom in for you guys real quick. I wanted to point out that this is all a huge volcanic ridge. These are all volcanoes. Every single speck you see is a volcano. If we can get it, we'll zoom in a little bit more. 
Let's see what the USGS has. That, that six nine is the big one, a five three, a five two, a five two. We have actually had over 16 earthquakes or 16 earthquakes in the last 24 hours associated with this, well, plate tectonic situation, this volcanic ridge, etc. And of course, there is what Tokyo, the area with the North American plate, the Pacific plate. Uh, the Eurasia plate and the Indonesia plate all pushing together as hard as they can. We should build some more nuclear power plants. What do you think? All right, jumping over to that region, we are, well, we've seen such a downtick in volcanic activity. I have no idea what's going on, but there was a volcano right under where we're see, seeing all this magma flow. It's at about 10 kilometers, or that's the default. So there's a lot of action going on here. They're going to have more earthquakes. And, you know, if I go down to all, they're going to have hundreds of earthquakes in this one little area. Uh, so uh, I'm worried about this area because this is going to spread throughout the U.S., period. All right, we got the word major, Adam, a major 6.9 magnitude earthquake. Most importantly, 21.1 atomic bombs of energy were released, and it looks like it created a tsunami that went to three directions. This might be the first time I've ever seen a tsunami. Y'all tell me what you think. We take a look. All right, taking a look at all the different modeling agencies, the French came in at a 6.4 with a 7.0 by the Australians here. And it looks like a 6.9 was the gist of things, being, well, the USGS being the main source there with lots of followers, as usual. We see that 10 kilometers or even shallower, 8.6 kilometers, could be that target depth. If it is, that's magma moving around just under the volcano itself. So we see three tsunami buoys in event mode. First time I've ever seen an earthquake cause three tsunami buoys in event mode. And this doesn't look like it was very long lasting, but I'm going to show you all on some detailed data. This was a the real deal, man. The real deal here. Surprised we haven't gotten reports because this looked like it was 20 meters, not feet, meters. And that's going to be up there in the 60-foot range, 70-foot range. So, by far, this is the biggest, biggest tsunami I've ever seen. Look at the plotted 15-second data. You can see there that... Uh, it looks like when it exploded with 21.1 atomic bombs worth of energy, like it shot up around 20 meters plus. So we're talking about 70 feet. Now, it did go in every direction. This was not a necessarily short-term event. It lasted over 30 minutes, close to 40 minutes. Now, we will do an update to the, uh, this evening around 10.30 because of all the action here in the Cascadia subduction zone, also under Rainier, St. Helens, etc. But so far, the story of the day, the 6.9 magnitude earthquake with an actual tsunami, not warning. And here we have a new depth of 16 kilometers. God bless you guys. Please. As you're looking at information that came out today, what well, came out yet late yesterday, and it's from the Western Journal, they have uh, put information along with some added info on this article, Gateway Pundit, and I will link that. But it says over half of the U.S. is at elevated risk of winter blackouts due to the Biden energy policies. Watchdog comments on industry report. Now, you combine that with what the weather has been saying, Farmer's Almanac, the predictions from major meteorologists is that the El Nino 
is going to have a big effect on the moisture this winter, snow, ice, things like that, over a large section of the country. And what we've seen is a major sell-off of natural gas. We've seen a lot of coal companies being slowed down. Um, any type of anything dealing with energy has not been upgraded as far as you guys in Texas with their cot over there. You had problems back in 2021 when that ice storm came through, and it came through here too, and it was rough. Uh, we lost power. Thank goodness I had enough solar panels for the basic and a wood-burning heater, which is one of the reasons I want to do the video because everyone needs to look into the, uh, the wood burners and some other alternative heating because, again, our infrastructure has been attacked uh, due to the green policies that uh, are in place. So my wife got me this weird new kit. Guys, I'm going to stop there. Uh, BP Earthwatch there. I'm going to stop there because absolutely true. Uh, Lisa Haven just talked about a lot of this already. So I'm going to stop here. But we need to be getting prepared for the winter coming. I don't like it at all. Uh, when you don't have a wood-burning stove and things around for alternative heating, uh, and they want to take away the propane, they want to take away this, they want to take away the wood-burning stove, they send that the stuff affects the uh, the environment and all this nonsense, you know. Uh, so what are people gonna do? They gonna want to They want to kill us? They want to kill us? I don't know. It seems like that's what they want to do because you gotta have some kind of heating, substitute heating, and if they got all this electricity. Uh, going on with the new cars and like she's saying all the stuff they're trying to do uh, It's just gonna be a sad situation guys sad situation So this is why I have in my mind. I wanted to try to get a homestead set up if God bless me to do that uh, Where some other families can come in and we can all be together as in the book of Acts sharing all things whatever But you know, I'm just throwing that out there. I did my last video talked about it a little bit uh, we know we need to be praying about it because I really don't know what's going to happen. But I know that the only thing can save you is Yeshua Messiah Ahia himself. You need to give your life to Messiah Yeshua. Because uh, you don't know when we could die, what can happen to us at any place, anytime, anywhere. And it's just time to set up yourself uh, in the heavenly kingdom. Uh, and learn to trust Yeshua, live supernaturally, people, uh, because I don't know. I've seen God put a, heel, a, a heat a heat ring around my body one time. I'm not joking. A heat ring around my body because I left my coat home, and it was in the middle of winter. A, a, a real blizzard came out of nowhere, and I'm telling you, it was a supernaturally heating around my body, and I know that Yeshua can do anything we trust in him to do, so we have to believe in him and trust in him only. But we need to be preparing what we can do with uh, propane, uh, wood burning stoves, or whatever we can do, because I'm telling you, it's got, I think that even now we had snow here this weekend, and it's cold, and, and it's a fierce kind of cold I never felt before, and the snow is just, uh, I, it, it's just that real bitter, uh, I don't even know what to call it, do you, honey? Uh, that kind of snow we got outside, it's just like, it is uh if you it just seemed a different snow to me i don't know uh like if you um oh and remind me of when yeah. remind me of when you look into the old freezers you know the old freezers they had years ago and you go trying to clean the freezer out and it's that pop that packed down snow and, and it's just uh I don't know. It just looks really weird to me. I don't know what they're doing with the environment, but something's going on. And every time you go out the house, you, you, you know, you uh, something's in the air. I can I just feel it. it just feel it coming in your, in the air. Uh, something chemtrails. I don't know what it is. When the, every time it snow, every time it rain, and they have the billow clouds up there in the air. I don't know. I don't know, guys. We just know we need to keep trusting in the Father. I'm going to go on and get on over here to missions and uh, into the Bible. And uh, I really want you guys to know that I love you so much for all the prayers. I really appreciate all the prayers uh, over the weekend when we went out Thursday. It was not, not that much traffic, really, and it was not hardly bad coming back either. So, and, But we was getting back quickly because we didn't want to be out in a snowstorm. So uh, I don't see my missions up here. I know I put it up here. So I may have to go pull them up again. I don't see it here. 
So, uh, you know, it's just really, really uh, sad what's, what's happening uh, to the world today. It's just we are in the end times and uh, we're going to be having a lot of things go on. So let me go ahead and do missions. Okay, let me go ahead and meet it out. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free in me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. to me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me yes he died for me who the sun sets free oh is free indeed I'm a child Okay, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for missionaries. I'm so happy uh, the missionaries are in the field. Uh, they're going out again this week, so please be praying for them, guys. Uh, just got some old funds to go out, so please be praying for them to be safe at all times. Over in uh, Bangladesh, over in India, over in Nigeria, all over in Uganda, uh, Kenya, in Ghana, in Ghana, and also in the Philippines, where we just saw the little children in the Philippines, the orphans in the Philippines. Uh, so we just thank you so much for your prayers. I'm going to get into the Bible today. I'm going to be going into different scriptures, guys. Uh, so I want you to follow me uh, in, the, in the scriptures that I'm going to be using to follow me. Uh, and uh, I don't know why my Bible not pulling up. Okay. Maybe it's all the way up somewhere. Okay. So uh, let me go ahead here and pray a little bit. Father, be with me as I get into the word today. Uh, we're going to be kind of covering some things, dealing with uh, fleeing from temptation. Uh, I tell you, so much going on with temptation and people getting in trouble. I'm talking about people in the body of Christ getting in trouble, uh, you know, uh, doing things they shouldn't do, uh, hanging out with people they shouldn't hang out with, uh, whatever uh, the case may be. Uh, but I'm going to be going into the Bible today uh, and showing you guys some uh, uh, encouragement scriptures that can probably help you stay out of trouble 
because a lot of people don't know we're in the end at the end and the world is changing every day. Uh, we have all these things going on, fallen angels and all these different things working around us, demonic spirits and all these things are happening. Uh, that's why I use spiritual warfare prayers uh, every day, uh, twice a day, every day. My husband do it in the morning. So three times a day, every day. We use in prayers and praying for you, praying for others. Uh, it's just really a serious time of prayer. Pray without ceasing. Pray and not faint. Uh, and you know, so it's really in encouraging uh, when God's word can give us encouragement to stay on the right pathway. Keep on the right pathway. Uh, Father, we ask that you come be with us now as we read your word from the scriptures uh, in your Bible and New Testament, Old Testament, wherever you appointed me to go. Uh, to give encouragement for this message. I thank you so much for loving us. I thank you for the Shabbat. I thank you for all the people fighting over in Israel, all the people in all these deployment, uh, people being deployed to fight, uh, putting your angels in charge over them, Father, letting supernatural things happen to keep them alive. Uh, we know things are, are going to heat up worse and worse, but you know, you say you have overcome the world, overcome the world, and greater he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we need to call Call on your name, my God, that, oh, be with us at all times. Be with us at all times, Father. So we ask it in Jesus' name. Uh, I'm going to go on over here now to um, Matthew. I come back to Timothy. I'm going over here to Matthew 26, 41. Matthew 26, 41. Let's see what it says here. All of you must keep awake. And I'm in the Amplified because I want to kind of teach a little bit here. Understand that you get understanding of what I'm saying here. But all of you must keep awake. That means give strict attention, be cautious and active. And watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The Bible, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And you know, all of us are weak. We are, are really weak. And I can give you a thousand uh, examples of when I was growing up from 16 years old on up. I did put some of my new, uh, uh, my testimonies in my book about all the things God did for me. He did what? He did it. It had nothing to do with me. He did it. And you know, and that's so we, if we trust in him, he will help us to deal with our weak flesh, our weak flesh. But we're going to have to learn to follow him, guys. Follow him, okay? And so I'm going to go on over here to another scripture uh, in James, where he's talking about it in James. Uh, James uh, 1, 13 to 15. James 1, 13 to 15. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted from God, for God is incapable of being tempted by what is evil and he himself tempts no one but every person is tempted when he is drawn away drawn away doing your own thing walking your own way leaning on your own understanding okay uh want to do it your way and so that's what he say here every person is tempted when he is drawn away enticed and baited by his own evil desire lust and passion so you know if you're going to sit there and look at uh uh, magazines you shouldn't be watching or looking at. Uh, you're going to look at movies on TV you shouldn't be watching. Uh, this going to stir up your lust and your passions. Uh, you're going to be going out to a club and hanging out with people you know you shouldn't hang out with, drinking with them, partying with them, uh, uh, you know, when drugs are all around, all kind of drugs are in your presence, and you know you're not a drugger, and you don't do drugs, and you're going to hang around with people that do drugs, you're going to hang around with people that, uh, uh, you know, drink things that you shouldn't be drinking, uh, you know, it, it, it's just simple, you don't do it, guys, you don't do it, you don't go out with people that way, you just stay away from people like that, you avoid it, I love it, like I say, you avoid it, you do not pass by it, you turn away from it, and you run. That's the song said that they run. Psalms 91, run. You know, we need to understand Joseph had to run. You know, he he he, he stripped his whole garment off and ran because he could have got in trouble with the the king's wife. And you know, we, we need to understand how serious these times are. There's so much temptation all around us every day, every night. 
And we have to make right choices. Right choices, guys. Nobody's going to hold you down and make you do it unless you're hanging with some gangbangers or somebody you shouldn't be hanging with. They might they might do it. I used to dream about when I was out in the uh when I was out doing missionary work going door to door years ago. I used to dream about guys coming to put a shot in my arm and, and trying to make me take a shot. And you know, and so I think it was a dream of wanting that I need to be watching and watching and watching because you you know, Yeshua give us warning and we need to be watching all the time who we're going to hang with, who we're not going to hang with and watching what we're doing in crowds of people or with friends and family or whoever it is. Proverbs here. Um, I'm going up here to Proverbs now. Uh, I think in the New Te Old Testament. Proverbs here 4. Uh, it talks about this here. A uh, really important message to uh, four, 14 to 15. 14 and 15. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. I just talked about that. Evil people. I can name some people now in prison for something they didn't do. In prison because they was walking around and hanging out with the wrong person. And then when these guys get in trouble, uh, the cops pull over and get them, arrest them. And they get arrested because they are hanging with that person. And I can name two cases, but I won't get into them. But I know two family, one in the family and one out of the family, a friend in a family. And I'm telling you, you can go to prison, you can go to jail, hanging out with the wrong people at the wrong time. You shouldn't be associating with them, young people. You shouldn't be going out driving around with them, okay? You shouldn't be associated with them in any way, shape, form, fashion. Stay away, stay away, run away, run away. And so it gone over here to say here in 15, avoid it. Do not go on it, turn from it and pass on, pass on. Cause it says here, for they cannot sleep unless they have caused trouble or vexation. They sleep is taken away unless they have caused someone to fall. You know, some people love to cause trouble, like to cause other people to have trouble, like to laugh at you when you are having uh, in trouble. You know, I remember in high school days, you know, it was a girl named, uh, her last name was, uh, I, I say her, her first name was, Masita, Masita. And I'll just say, you know, she was in the in the yearbook with me and I'm my pictures here, her pictures there. And I'm just telling you, she got in trouble cuz she was trying to abort a baby. And her mom was trying to help her abort a baby. And I'm just trying to tell you both of them died. The mother died and she died. And I'm just trying to tell you guys, you know, these things go on every day, every day, every day. Trouble, trouble, trouble. We need to stay away from trouble, not doing things we shouldn't be doing, not getting involved with Bad music, you know, that's another thing, music. I got it on my paper here written down, music, music. You know, I used to be a music person, love my music, love my jazz. I still like a little jazz, but I hardly ever play jazz ever again. I'm just saying, you know, music, uh, wrong type of music, rap music, uh, blues and all these music. You know, I used to play music. And, you know, I remember the times when I was in one of my past marriages and, uh, you know, you're playing all these musics, you know. Uh, I can't even remember the name of the person now. Might it was Tony Braxton or somebody. I don't know. But you're playing all this music. And, and, and you know, and, and all this music do is get you upset, right? Get you upset. You're playing this music by, oh, he broke my heart. And then you end up, uh, you know, getting in a fight with your husband or something. And, and they, you end up breaking up later or whatever. All this music do is just get you into devastation. Devastation. That's why in heaven... Satan was the, was the top angel in heaven, and he used to walk around causing trouble. He used to be the top choir director. He knew all the music. He knew how to do every music. He knew, what, he knew how to entice you with music. He knew how to get you uh, all uh, just vexed up with music and, and, you know, all this stuff, the lusting after music. And, and, you know, and we, in the day, he still used the same tactics, the same tactics he used in heaven, he used in today before he was kicked out of heaven. You know, he, he caused gossip all around heaven and he was kicked out. And now today he's used, using music, using music to just, oh man, control you like crazy, control you like crazy. When you become a born again person, you should really just stay away from secular music much as possible. I mean, you know, I think on a holiday, on a birthday, on an anniversary, I might play a little love song or something, uh, something. But that that's about far as it goes. 
I don't, I don't even play secular music. I, we are in the car and we out and about going to the grocery store, going to the shopping, going on the highway. We always got our Paul Weber, our, uh, our secu uh, our Christian, our messianic music playing. Uh, you know, it's just better to do that guys. I'm telling you, these things can trip you up. All this secular stuff can trip you up. And we need to be trying to clean up our life, clean up our heart, clean up our acts and learn to follow Yeshua and he will help you do it. Sometimes you can't just drop it all at once. And I know I didn't drop it all at once, but I just gradually just got away from it. Uh, jazz and all these music make you think about partying and drinking and going out. And, you know, we need to just change our lifestyle. Okay. Change our lifestyle. But he said they can't even, they, you know, these people love to have you, um, Look, it says here, for they eat the bread of wickedness. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. And you know, a lot of these people are violent. They, they just want to keep violence going, keep drama going, drama, 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 you know, and you, know, you should try to make new friends, get positive friends, get people who believe like you in your life, uh, you know, make a social club of, of coming together. Uh, with uh, doing things that's more on harmony with the word of God. You know, we don't need to be uh, entertaining that, but music is a big downfall today for young people, for old people, for any people. You know, if you want to fall, uh, get involved with secular music too much, uh, you may end up drinking too much, doing other things too much. So it's best, best to do uh, the things you need to do. So I'm going to go on over here to Second Timothy here. I'm going to go on over here to 2 Timothy. I'm going to look at my clock here. I don't even see my clock here. Okay. But let me go on over here to 2 Timothy. Uh, I don't want to be here too long. 2 Timothy 2.22. Okay. Okay. 2 Timothy 2.22. Shun your shun useful lust, shun useful lust, and flee from them, and aim at and pursue righteousness, all that is virtuous and good, right living, conformity to the will of God, in thought, in word, in deed, and aim at and pursue faith, love, and peace, harmony and concord with others, in fellowship with all Christians who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart, but refuse. Shut your mind against, have nothing to do with trifling, what, ill-informed, unedifying, stupid controversies over ignorant questionings, for you know that they foster strife and breed quarrels. And you know, we need to know that. We need to know that just don't be around bad people, guys. I mean, you know, some people in the family, I, I know I got people in my family, I, I don't even know if I would want to uh, live around them here sometime. Cause they like to party all the time. They want to do this all the time. They want to just out about worldliness, worldliness, worldliness. It's time to really make your choices and follow the right way. I had something on my mind and I can't think about it now. Uh, it's just that a lot of people are getting shot, killed, destroyed because they're hanging with the wrong people uh, at the wrong place. You need to cover yourself with the blood every time you go out your house. Every time you go on the highway, cover your car, anoint your car, anoint your house. I'm telling you guys, it's just the devil is attacking all over the place. And we need to be understanding how serious it is. I'm going to go on over here to 1 Corinthians. Maybe I, my thought will come back what I had in mind. Uh, 1 Corinthians here. Um... 618, 618. Okay, 618. We need to talk to our young people about life, about real life. That's what it is, sexual, all this sexual looseness. Uh, the women dressing like they just don't know how to cover themselves up. Uh, you know, and all, we, 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 we draw men and we draw the wrong companies to our young you know, young people, uh, daughters, uh, you know, and all these things, just, uh, uh, this homosexuality is all around, but we got also, we have uh, around, uh, 
What's the, I'm trying to think of it, Father. What is it? You know, I talk about it every day. Sex trafficking, drug trafficking, human trafficking. Thank you. Okay. It's all around the place. And we need to be always talking to our young daughters about how they dress. And I know it's very difficult because I know I have some granddaughters sometimes don't want to hear. They want to dress like they want, do what they want. But it's to protect them. It's to, to train them, to teach them, to know uh, that devil, the devil is lurking, 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 watching, tracking. And, you know, we need to know how important these things are in the world we're living in today. So many people are dying. So many people are killed. Every day I look at the news, so many things are going on with young people. So many things are going on with anybody. You know, you're going out alone. You can't be going out alone. If you know you shouldn't go out alone, don't go out alone. Uh, you know, uh, have your husband or your uh, or family member or somebody to be with you. Uh, it's just really good to be common sense and wisdom, getting wisdom from the heavenly kingdom. We need to know it's time to be wise in these end times, wise as we can be in these end times. Shun immorality and all sexual looseness. Flee from impurity in thought, word, or deed. Any other sin which a man commits is one outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. And you know, it, it's just so much of that going on. I don't even want to get into it on this video because I would have to X-rate it or you know, I don't know. I don't want to get into it because there's just so much of it's going on. We got to learn to protect our young people, protect our, uh, our, our young daughters and our, our sons. And, and it's not, it used to be all about the daughters, but it ain't even about the daughters anymore. It's about the sons too. It's it just a lot of things are going on out there and we need to be aware of it and be uh, protecting our families in any way shape form and so I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here now uh, I had another thought in my mind but I'm telling you guys we need to understand the music the music is really affecting our young people and um, and they are getting all into all the sexual stuff and lust and uh, uh, and a lot of people are going out there just robbing and stealing and and trying to think they can have all this money all this money they they want for to buy this to buy that and it just leads from one thing to another so uh, we need to be having Bible principles, Bible principles today, uh, keeping ourselves, uh, as Yeshua said, like I said, Joseph had to run, uh, uh, fleeing from temptation, uh, getting out of bad companies, bad people, uh, and realizing how important it is. You know, I'm pretty much alone. I, me and my husband are pretty much our best friends. We, we are best friends to one another. And we don't pretty much hang out with people very much. We don't go out and associate very much. Uh, we do our ministry at home and we uh, pray for others. And uh, I'm always counseling the uh, missionaries on, online and texting and tracking and trying to talk to them and keep up with what they're doing, trying to encourage them. And so we need to be knowing how important it is to stay in the word, stay in the word, stay in the word, and not be associating with people who are going to make your downfall, make you fall, make you fall. If you're trying to walk upwardly, uh, my next video, I'm going to try to come back and do a video on I try to do a uh, show my poem I wrote it years ago, a higher high. It's really time for us to have a higher high because it's time is really running out, running out, running out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get off of this because I think my time is running out. I don't, I don't see my clock because it's blocked here somewhere. So uh, let me go ahead and get on over here to uh, close out. Let me go find my. Um, oh, Maranatha, Maranatha is what I'm thinking, of, thinking of all the. We're going to go close out with Maranatha, uh, June uh, 17, and uh, let's listen to it. Calamities, blame on God's people. So let me go ahead and shut it out. But Father, I ask that you would be with the people watching today. Help us to choose the right pathway. Help us to choose the uh, right company. Help us to walk in the right way that you would have us to walk in these evil days. We know time is short, Father, and we know that you would, uh, uh, you would really uh, advise us to do the right thing, to be wise at these times. Thank you so much for this message. I hope a lot of people have heard this message, and that we're going to go on over here and hear this message. So thank you so much for your word, Father. Your word is so amazing. So let me go on over here and get to June 17 and mute it out right now. June 17, calamities blamed on God's people. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, 
because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation 12:12. 12, 12. As men depart further and further from God, Satan is permitted to have power over the children of disobedience. He hurls destruction among men. There is calamity by land and sea. Property and life are destroyed by fire and flood. Satan resolves to charge this upon those who refuse to bow to the idol which he has set up. His agents point to Seventh-day Adventists as a cause of the trouble. These people stand out in defiance of law, they say. They desecrate Sunday. Were they compelled to obey the law for Sunday observance, there would be a cessation of these terrible judgments. Calamities will come, calamities most awful, most unexpected, and these destructions will follow one after another. If there will be a heeding of the warnings that God has given, and if churches will repent, returning to their allegiance, then other cities may be spared for a time. But if men who have been deceived continue in the same way in which they have been walking, disregarding the law of God and presenting falsehoods before the people, God allows them to suffer calamity that their senses may be awakened. The judgments will be according to the wickedness of the people and the light of truth that they have had. If they have had the truth, according to that light will be the punishment. Satan puts his interpretation upon events, and they, leading men, think as he would have them that the calamities which fill the land are a result of Sunday breaking. Thinking to appease the wrath of God, these influential men make laws enforcing Sunday observance. They think that by exalting this false rest day higher and still higher, compelling obedience to the Sunday law, the spurious Sabbath, they are doing God's service. Those who honor God by observing the true Sabbath are looked upon as disloyal to God, when it is really those who thus disregard them who are themselves disloyal because they are trampling underfoot the Sabbath originated in Eden. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, the Sabbath is a sign for God's people. And like I said, uh, guys, we need to be understanding that how important it is to walk with Yeshua now in these evil days, evil times, okay? Uh, as I was going to say, uh, we really need to be always hanging with Yeshua, hanging with him, reading his word, reading positive books, you know, things that's going to enlighten you, encourage you. Uh, not these other books, novels and all this stuff about, you know, flesh, flesh, flesh. And it, it's just so many things that the devil can trip us up on. So many things. The movies we watch, the music we play, uh, and just all these things we have to be more choicey, uh, cho choosing right, uh, wisely. I can't hardly even watch a movie sometime myself. It's always a, a curse word here, curse word there. And it just, we have to be very choicey. I have to be uh, just uh, telling God to forgive me all the time for hearing things, watching things, uh, you know, whatever. So you need to just be always prayerful, always prayerful in Yeshua. But he said in Philippians 4.13, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Uh, who strengthening me. We need to know that he can strengthen you. Uh, he can help you to come out of those bad situations. He can give you new friends. He can give you new associations to, to be with. Uh, churches, uh, uh, sometimes the churches aren't even that great. Some of them are so corrupt now today. So you have to be very picky and choicey and let the Lord lead you and guide you. So I'm going to go ahead and close out uh, right now. I tell you, we got a lot of storms going on. The world is in a lot of tension, a lot of tension everywhere, all over the world, because we have broken the commandments of God. We don't want to uh, walk by his ways. Uh, so we have all these troubles and sorrows and problems. Even people eating things they shouldn't be eating, and they're getting all kind of things breaking out on their skin, and all kind of things are happening because they're eating unclean foods. And, and you may not think it matter, but it does matter. Uh, you know, if you're going to eat all these unclean foods, and you can look at that in Leviticus 11 chapter, uh, he talked about all these things. The pork is one really bad, but I know a lot of other things are bad. Seafood. You know these seafood uh, animals? They carry diseases. They carry bacteria. They carry these things, guys. I'm sorry, but it does. And people want to know why they're sick, why they're breaking out with that, why they have uh, cancer and 
colon diseases and all kind of things because they eaten unclean, unclean foods. So Yeshua made the Bible for a blueprint for us to follow. So it's time to really follow him. Uh, don't forget about the homeless people in your areas. There's a lot of them around this time of year as the winter is coming in. We had about three inches of snow here yesterday, uh, but be watching out for them, guys. Uh, money is getting to be a problem. We may soon lose the dollar as it's falling away every day. They can do some other changes here with the uh, digital currency coming in. Uh, emergencies are every day. I have everybody calling me, writing me, pray for my person. I had surgery. I pray, pray for this person. Uh, they in the hospital, whatever. It's a lot going on. I haven't seen so many people write me about health problems in a long time all over America. So uh, be always trusting Yeshua. We got all these earthquakes, uh, tornadoes, tsunamis, and all kind of things are going on. Time is really running out before us, guys. Time is running out before us. We need to really know that the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord that God. Stress is another killer. A lot of people doing too much work, overworking, overworking. No time for God. No time for God at all. Just working six and seven days a week. No rest. No rest time, okay? So it's really time to have the red alert, and that red alert is to give your life to Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Messiah Ahia, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you haven't given your life to Messiah today, uh, I wish you would do that today. I think I was looking at a comment the other day. I was looking at a, a page and somebody was saying, I'm atheist, I'm this. Well, you know, I had to comment on there and tell them that they need to have their DNA chain. They need to have their heart change that God can only do it he's the only one can give that surgery that you need at this time he the only one can do it come out of Adam's seed to his seed where he can put you in his kingdom where you can understand that you'll like to read his word if you're going to read it in the flesh you're not going to want to read it you're not going to want to read the bible in this flesh we in this this uh, uh not having his holy spirit to guide you so you really need to be knowing that it's important that we repent, repent, repent. <clears throat> that is the red alert. Today is to repent and give your life to Jesus Christ because he is coming soon. All the signs are showing. So I'm going to go ahead and close out. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and close out. Uh, my husband, I'm giving him a little rest today too. He needed a little rest today. But anyway, uh, we are really happy to be back off the roads. I tell you, so many people dying, so many shootings. I think it was a shooting last night in New Mexico. Then they said it was not a shooting. I don't know. It's just most shootings going on around America than I ever heard of in my life. So, Father, uh, please be with us today and protect us. We do please Psalm 91 over all of us today to be protected because there's so many things are happening. But buy my ebook, guys, titled He Did What from Amazon.com, Apple, Google, Kobo.com, Lulu.com, Bonds and Noble. Uh, also, the link is in front of you and also the ISBN number. Uh, also, the Son of Man Bible, download Gene's free e-Bible from Lulu.com, Kobo.com, Smashwords.com, Scribdy.com, FMCMI.org. Read the Son of Man Bible PDF for free. Download the Son of Man Bible computer Bible modulus for free. Download free at Bible Support and Word Modulus.com. Uh, thank you for all your offerings to help the help homeless, the offerings, the widows, and those in need of mission fields. My Yahuwah, richly bless each and every one of you guys. I really appreciate all your offerings, your cards, your emails, your beautiful cards. You mail me and send me uh, gifts of any kind. You know, I know some other gifts too came in from a lady in Texas. So we really appreciate you guys so much to keep this channel up and running and to support the people in need. So FMCMI Alternative Channels is rumble.com, bitshoot.com, facebook.com, fmcmi.org. Donate by cash app, a cash tag. Uh, also, other donation options, fmcmi.org, marner.camber at gmail.com at PayPal. Mail in your donations at Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Uh, shipping address, Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Click subscribe to like bell, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the like button, click the notification bell. Our digital business cards in front of you. 
and also I'd hashtags. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go and enjoy the rest of the night. The night is already here, 546 here in Colorado. Uh, Sabbath is uh, going down. So we ask you blessings to be with us, and we thank you so much for all you do. I'm going to go ahead and pray a little short prayer and let you guys go. I really appreciate each and every one of you. So, Father, be with us today on this Shabbat. We thank you so much for loving us, caring for us. We ask that you be with all the people, Father, uh, supplying all the people needs, whether it's physical, mental, or spiritually. I bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. I bind all evil spirits on assignment against us. I bind up the spirit of backlash. I bind up the spirit of every hex and vex and voodoo and black magic and witchcraft and sorcery. I bind up all the Nephilim spirits, crossbreed spirits, half-breed spirits, strong man spirits. We bind them all up. We put them into the abyss, into the day of judgment. We ask that your holy, holy fire, your holy, holy spirit will fall on your people. People, Father, awakening up at this hour, awaken them up at this time, helping them to know that greater he that is in us than he that is in the world, and you are coming soon, my God. Oh, Father, help us to repent, 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 because we know that the devil is a liar and the truth ain't in him. He is the father of lies. Oh, Father, help us to know not to follow bad companies, not to be with hang, hanging out with bad people. Oh, Father, help us to be wise at this time, and we ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Yeshua, Messiah, Ahaya. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for caring. Thank you so much for being our Savior, Father. We just thank you so much for who you are, God all by yourself. So we thank you so much. We ask you blessings in his name. Shalom. So I'm going to go now, guys. I thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'm going to just say Shabbat Shalom. And I think I had a Shabbat Shalom somewhere. Hold on here a minute. Got my pictures all tangled up. Yeah. Oh, hold on. <laughs> so I'm going to say a happy Sabbath to all of you out there and let heaven and earth praise him. And so I'm, I'm going to go now and I'll see you guys in another video. I really love you guys so very much. I thank you for all you do and all you're doing and what you're doing. And continue praying for us as we pray for you. Shabbat Shalom. I love you guys so much. Shabbat Shalom.